All right, so now we are going to talk about a uh, drill that's really good to work on uh, your offensive and defensive dinks. It's called a figure eight drill. So in this drill, uh, Clint and Bethany would hit every ball uh, down the line to start, and then Catherine and I would hit every ball cross court to start. Um, so aggressive dinks are the ones that are gonna be the ones going cross court. The defensive dinks will be the dinks that are going straight ahead. Um, so when you're being aggressive with those dinks, you probably want to uh, go cross court because it's a longer kitchen, you have more time, um, and you have a little bit more margin for error when you're hitting this cross court dink. So if you feel comfortable, you feel like you have time and you want to do a little bit more with your dink, be aggressive, then I would try to go cross court, kind of build the point so that you're looking to get that ball that's a little higher uh, cross court. Now, the opposite goes for the defensive dink, right? If I feel uncomfortable, if I feel like I need a little bit more time, um, then I probably want to take that reset straight ahead. Um, you want it to be a, a little bit higher above the net, um, and you want it to land nice and shallow so that you can guarantee that it bounces, which gives you time to get back into position. Um, so in this drill, uh, again, uh, Bethany and Clint will go down the line. They're working on their defensive dinks, and Catherine and I are going to hit cross court, so we're going to be hitting our uh, dinks a little bit more aggressively, right? Um, and the point of the drill is to see if you can kind of be consistent and keep the rally going, right? Even though there's one side of the court that's being uh, very aggressive, the point is you want to keep the rally going and see if you can be consistent with this drill. Okay, so Catherine will feed that ball over to Clint. Good. So if you're, if you're Clint, right, your number one goal is to get this defensive dink to bounce in front of me, right? Because if I take the next ball out of the air, Bethany and Clint will not have enough time or as much time as they would if the ball was bouncing to recover and get back into position to hit that next ball, right? So their number one goal being the defensive side is make sure they get that reset to bounce so they have more time to recover. Right. Um, and then in terms of Catherine and I's goal, right, we're the ones that are supposed to be aggressive. So if I hit a, a dink to Bethany, um, how can I be aggressive? I want to make sure, one, that she's moving to have to get to the ball, right? If she doesn't even have to take one step, then that means I didn't do a good job. Or two, maybe I adjust the depth of my dinks a little bit because now I'm kind of making her think, right? Okay, should I take this ball out of the air? Should I let it bounce? Should I back up? And now I'm forcing her to think. Whereas if I'm hitting the dink nice and shallow, she doesn't really have to think. She lets it bounce. She has a lot of time. Her contact point remains in front of her body and she kind of just hits it back, right? Um, the biggest thing we'll see um, at these camps that we do is we'll send people out we'll, to do this figure eight drill and uh, I'll walk to the core and they're like, oh, Athena, like, we're really good at this. We're doing great. And I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. So I'll, I'll walk over, I'll look at them do this drill and I see that the aggressive dinks are not aggressive at all. So obviously the defensive dinks are coming back perfectly because they're not really challenging each other, right? And this is a drill, it's kind of easy to do nonchalantly, right? Um, you're kind of just going through the motions, but the goal should be to challenge each other and hold each other accountable so that the aggressive dinks are actually aggressive and so that the defensive dinks are challenging, right? Because if I'm not being aggressive with my cross court dinks, then Bethany doesn't really get to practice a realistic defensive dink, right? So you want to make sure that you are doing this drill with purpose and not kind of just going through the motions as you do it, right? Um, so let's switch roles. So now you guys are going to go cross court, so you'll be hitting these aggressive dinks. And then Catherine and I will be going down the line, we'll be hitting the defensive dinks. So our number one goal here for Catherine and I is making sure that we can get these defensive dinks to bounce. Nice. One, Clint. Nice. Good. Nice. Great dink. Cause a mistake.
So then on top of that too, if I hit a defensive dink and Clint feels like he can take the ball out of the air, he should do that, right? Because that lets me know that I didn't do a good enough job with my defensive dink, right? Whereas if Clint is backing up, letting my ball bounce, maybe I think, oh, I hit a pretty good shot. But I didn't really, if Clint has the opportunity to take that ball out of the air, right? Um, so we'll do one more here. Good aggressive dink. Oh, cause a mistake, nice. Oh, I should have taken that ball out of the air. <sighs> All right, here we go. Good. Nice. Oh. <laughs> All right.